at our next guest. Oh, there I am. Published a report that suggests hedge funds and mutual funds are looking beyond the magnificent seven. Some shared stock favorites of both groups are Uber, MasterCard, and ServiceNow. Goldman Sachs' chief U.S. equity strategist has an S&P 500 target of 5,200. And here he is, David Costa. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, let's first talk about this MAG7. I want to, let me just get this right. Six trillion of positioning data suggests hedge funds and mutual funds are looking beyond the MAG7. What does that yeah. mean? So, David, for almost 20 years, every quarter, we look at the positioning of mutual funds and hedge funds. We go through about $6 trillion of individual positions, and we understand where it is that uh, fund managers are positioning themselves. And one of the observations is that the concentration in the hedge fund community is very significant in the Mag- Magnificent Seven. No not surprise. A shock, not a shock. But basically, David, it's not just that they own them, that it's one of their top 10 holdings. So pretty much if you own Amazon, it's a top 10 position. Microsoft, uh, Meta, Google, that's a really important statement because that's what drives their performance. On the other hand, if you look at the mutual fund community, mutual funds tend to be underweight these positions. They own them, but less than a benchmark weight, and therefore relative performance versus their benchmark has been uh, has been challenging. Uh, this time, they're actually significantly underweight. Apple, Tesla, which actually been a benefit to them relative. Yeah, not a great performer. So that's part of the analysis that we look at, which is how are they positioned at the stock level. The second is how are they positioned, generally speaking, in terms of risk on versus risk off. Another way of thinking about that is we look at the uh, gross leverage in the hedge fund community, the net exposure, running now at the highest levels we've seen in, in several years. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, we're at all-time high in terms of gross exposure. On the other hand, you look at the mutual funds, they have reduced their cash positions, one of the lowest cash positions they've had in uh, four years. And so that's another you know, evidence, data-based evidence, that they're significantly invested in the market. And then the third item that uh, I think is worth highlighting a little bit what you referenced is it's the shared favorites that you should be owning as a portfolio manager, because statistically they tend to outperform by about three percentage points in a year. And so What's what are a those? shared favorite? A shared what does favorite that mean? is if mutual funds and hedge funds both uh, agree on those. So you're looking at MasterCard, you're looking at Visa, Workday, you can look at uh, uh, Danaher, you can look at KKR. Those are some of the positions that are there's congruence between the uh, fund managers and hedge funds and the mutual fund world. And I right. think that's an uh, important observation. All that said, both those parties have underperformed the S&P for years. I mean, I can probably go back a long way and find very few instances where they've outperformed. Well, you can see situations where, like in 2022, when the uh, big cap stocks, the Magnificent Seven, <laughs> were down 40%. Uh, yes. And so that obviously is a situation where the mutual funds tended to do better, relatively big. speaking, because they were underweight those stocks. So part Good of point. it is how, they, uh, how those stocks tend to, uh, tend to perform. Right. But in this environment, those companies have had terrific results, as you have chronicled well on this, uh, this program and others. Uh, they've done, you know, had terrific performance in the fourth quarter results. And then looking forward, they're expected to have revenue growth of around 12% for the next annualized for the next several years. The rest of the market is closer to three. So you got much faster, you know, sales growth. On their hand, they saw those stocks trade at 30 times, uh, times earnings. So yeah. some of these shared favorites are slightly under, you know, less value, less highly valued. And that's a, a perhaps a more risk adjusted return you know, opportunity. Set. Do you think the market is getting re-rated because of generative AI and the impact that it's going to have on productivity and the economy and industries? Because, you know, we were just talking about so the market's been just steadily marching higher despite these rising bond yields and they're taking out the Fed cuts and we're wondering about inflation again. And I do wonder if if AI is playing a role here bro- more broadly than just NVIDIA and a few other stocks. So I heard just before I was coming on the program, you were referencing uh, the Atlanta GDP yes. now forecast. The U.S. stock market is pricing as though the U.S. economy is growing at three more than three percent. And that's statement is based on the relative performance of cyclical stocks compared with defensive stocks. That scaled relative to the economy is actually giving us an indication the stock market investors are pricing economic growth. So your observation, is that attributable to AI? Is it contribu- attributable to general broad economic uh, activity? You know, disentangling that as to why it's exactly uh, higher, you could, you could debate that for a, for a long time.